Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Everything is greening up in the bonsai garden, but I'm wondering about our community orchard. I haven't been out there for at least a month, so I'm going to head out there now and we'll see what trees are alive and which ones didn't make it through the winter. I'm here at the community orchard, the community gardens, the First Nations gardens, and the edible forest. Let's go in now and see the trees. I'm going to go down the row of dwarf trees first. You can see there's our bag of coffee grounds for compost. So the first tree has buds swelling on it. That looks good. I'm not going to spend too much time on the trees, but uh, the second one, it also looks good. The buds are swelling. And we come to this one. I think this is a cherry. Yeah, Stella cherry. Uh, looking really good. The buds are swelling beautifully. The next one. Ooh. That was a sweet cherry. That one is dead. That doesn't look good. You can see the bloods, the buds are black. That looks really good. So that's it for the row of the dwarf trees. It looks like we maybe lost three trees. I can't, I can't remember. At least three. Anyway, three or four. Let's go see the central tree. And I think this was a peach, peach tree. This is the middle of the spiral garden that we started. You can see all our holes dug out here. And this was going to be planted and hopefully it's going to be planted soon. As I said, they're just coming up with some procedures of how to run the garden. We're uh, legally allowed to come out here now. Here's the central tree. Now, it looks good. There's buds swelling, at least there. Yeah, it just hasn't come out yet. Which I'm really surprised because everything else in my bonsai garden, I've got two fruit trees there and they're all starting to leaf out. And my pear tree is leafing out. Here's a row of peach trees near the gardens. See, that's got green leaves all of it, all over it. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's go to this one now. That one looks good, I can see from here. It's got leaves coming out all over that. And this one here, oh, look at this one. Not only does it have leaves, but it's got all kinds of flowers on it. See the pink flowers? Wow, <laughs> that's really cool. This is a Harrow Diamond Peach. Rootstock is Bailey, semi-dwarf, self-fertile. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now let's go down our row of fruit trees along the fence here. Ooh, they're looking pretty good. I think this is a pear. It's a Anjou pear. Yeah, that's looking really good. Holy. Now this one, we got fruit off of it last year. And you can see, I'm pretty sure those are all flower buds there. These bundles. See that? Looks like all the flowers and then the leaves come out of the pointy, the pointy buds. So it's going to flower pretty soon. That's really cool. The next one I can see already, it's doing really well. And I think this is the same kind of tree. Yeah, there's your pear. Wow, that's gonna look beautiful in a, uh, another week probably. And then we've got some apple trees here. Looks good, green coming out on those. And way over here, that's alive too, looking good. Got buds coming out. And then over here we've got another tree. Way over here by the shared community gardens. And it looks good, I can tell from here. And I see white flowers on it. Look at that. Just coming out. Wow. So this one is a grafted. I think it has three different species of, I think they're cherries on here. It might tell me if I look. 
or is it plums? I don't know. Plums. There's plums. Yeah, combination plum tree. Okay. Yeah, so it looks good. Let's go now and have a look at the cedar trees that we planted last fall. Here's a look at the cedar trees now. Now these trees were pretty rough when they got them. They were all jammed together, so there's always one side of them that was didn't get much light. And uh, you can see on this one over here, the one side is all kind of dead on it. But the side that's alive looks really healthy. And that's just, they were at a nursery and they're all jammed together. So yeah, the living part looks really good and that'll grow fine. I think they're all looking fairly good. The one here has a lot of winter burn on it. But you know, the foliage looks really good and green and healthy. So yeah, it looks like so far, even though, you know, there's the one side is not looking so good. The live side looks really good. So I think they've all made it, which is really good. That was a look at the community orchard. It looks like we've lost three or four trees, but uh, you know, I'm used to losing trees because I've grown bonsai trees for a long time. Every spring you're hoping they come out into leaf and there's always one or two that just doesn't make it through the winter. So I think for all the trees we planted, losing three or four is, is pretty good because these trees aren't established yet. You know, once they get established and then you start losing trees, then you've got to wonder why. But uh, when they're just young whips like this, um, you know, it, it takes a few years to get that root system in the ground and the trees get going. So, so that's it for the update out here today. I don't know if you can tell, but it's snowing right now, just a light snow in the air, even though it's, you know, noontime. And we're supposed to go down to minus four degrees tonight, which is 26.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty cold. I'll show you what I've done to the greenhouse to, pre to prepare. I did some more sealing up around the door the other day, and I've also put this blanket down here, and it kind of seals in the little gap at the bottom of the door. And right now, the temperature is 20.9 degrees Celsius. So really nice and warm in there. I changed the heater. The heater I had before, I noticed it wasn't putting out a lot of heat. So I thought, well, maybe there's something wrong with it. And there was. It, it was only capable of going to the lowest setting. So I got another heater. I had one... Uh, I don't know where it came from, but I had one around the house and I stuck that in there and it's keeping it really warm now. So I think it'll be fine tonight, even though we're going down to those cold temperatures. Because right now it's only, I think the high today is supposed to be four degrees Celsius. Some snow just landed on my microphone here. Yeah, so here it is snowing mid-afternoon. Ah, spring will come. I'm getting some spring leaves out. Here the red maple has its leaves coming out. Looks really nice. My Norway maple, it has leaves coming out. Now I noticed the apex over here. It has a nice bud there, a nice bud there. Two buds down there, but they're not coming out. And that was the same problem I had with this other apex the one year. It had buds on top and then they, they never came out. And these lower branches seem to be taken over. So what I've been doing is I've been pinching out the lower branches as they emerge, just pinching them back. So hopefully I can get some vigor up to that new leader. I don't know, it's not looking promising. My uh, Manitoba maples or my box elder maples, they're coming out into leaf too. Look kind of cool. My other red maple here, it's got leaves coming out. My apple, my poor old apple, it has some leaves coming out. Nothing appearing on the part I cut off, the one leader I want to have bud out. There is a bud down there that hopefully is swelling. What else is a sign of spring? Well, the larches, they haven't done much since the last video. Oh, you can see the snow now. 
Yeah, they, they haven't done much. The needles have kind of come out. Here's my other larch. You can see the needles are very tiny on it. They haven't really done too much. Uh, the candles on my Austrian pine, they're just starting to elongate. You can see all the back budding in here. And that's what I wanted. I simplified all my branch structure last year, hoping to get all this back budding. And this year I'm going to make the whole structure of this tree more compact. So that'll be an interesting thing to do. I'll see what it looks like. Uh, over here, the candles on my Scots pine are, they're really elongating. The one that's on Shani's pot here. Uh, the elms are coming out. You can see the leaves on the elms. The linden, they're just green and swollen. Nothing's come out yet. The, the royal oak, the leaves are really, or the buds are really swollen and they look like they'll come out any time. So hopefully they'll survive the root pruning I gave them. This elm, both of these elms, the medium and the large one, the leaves are coming out and remember I pruned all these branches off the elm all the lower ones and now look at all the new growth coming out it's just back budding all over the trunk the uh, birch tree that I root pruned and potted up its leaves are coming out really nicely it's looking good the ginkgo I've got green on all these tips all over the trunk here and the leader so so far that's looking good my Douglas firs, some of the buds are looking quite good. They're not really big. I would say these are fairly small buds. You can see up here, it looks fairly good. Up here, there's a lot of buds. Um, this branch, for instance, I don't see any buds on it at all. No new buds. So that one's pretty weak branch. Uh, there's a few branches over here that are really weak. So. I don't know, and the tall ones here, they've got some good strong buds. I also have some weak ones on some of the branches, but yeah, some of the branches have fairly good buds on them. You can see them coming off the trunk here. They look good and strong. So I think these other two trees will survive and the main tree will survive, but this one back here, last year it had some green needles on it and it still has maybe two green needles, but I don't think that's going to make it. I mean, it's possible, but I doubt it. My spruce, it's getting some nice green on the ends of the buds, so that's well, coming out. And I think that's it. I think that's the only signs of spring. Certainly doesn't look like spring out here with the snow falling, but oh, I don't know, what can you do? This is growing bonsai in Canada. <laughs> yeah, you just have to be patient. That's why I'm trying to extend this growing season for these tropicals. They're really liking it in the greenhouse. I've got a lot of new growth coming out on them. I have some of them, the leaves got sunburn when they come from indoors to, to the greenhouse out here, even though it still has the plastic up here. They still get sunburned, but uh, not too badly. And those leaves, they'll fall off and all the new ones will grow in, so. So that's about it on this snowy, cold day today. Not very spring-like. It's time now to continue on with this series, planting my coastal redwood and all these seeds, my tamarind seeds and my oak seeds. Coastal redwood trees aren't really hardy, I did protect this tree over the winter. I wintered it in the basement and most of the leaves were green over the winter but since it's been outside in spring they've kind of they haven't fallen off but they've uh, gotten less than green I guess. There is a lot of buds on the trunk so I'm hoping it's still alive. I think it is and I'm hoping in spring you know all these buds swell and I get all kinds of new green foliage on the tree. So let's get the tree out of the pod now and see what the root system's like. All right, here I go. I'll 
grab the tree somewhere down here. I don't want to damage any buds. I'm going to be very careful. And I'll just gently pull. And there we go. It's out. So I'll probably put the tree back in the same pot, this plastic training pot. Um, there's lots of roots in it. You can see they're wrapping around the pot, but it's not too dense. So I'll rake the roots out and we'll see exactly what they look like. It is a cold and windy day today. So you might hear a lot of wind noise on the microphone. It's only uh, a high of four degrees today. And then it drops down to minus four at night. So yeah, not, not very warm out here at all. After I repot this redwood, I'm going to protect it. I'll put it on the floor of the greenhouse where it'll stay a reasonable temperature while it freezes outside. So I'm just untangling. A lot of these roots are going round and round in the pot, so got to get those untangled. Hey, you can see some green down here on the tree. I did start one from a seed uh, in the middle of winter, actually. Um, it sprouted, so if this one doesn't make it, I do have a, I've got a backup, a little seedling inside. It's only, you know, about this tall, but uh, it's growing, it's good. If this one doesn't make it through the winter, I will know to protect them more for next year. And I can always get another one off Chris Hendry, the bonsai guy. Okay, so this root system's looking really good, actually. Nice and fibrous, fairly flat. Yeah, it's looking really, really good. I'll get the root system washed up in the cold water and come back and start the root pruning. But first, we'll have to chase the ducks out of the area. They're all in there drinking. I just love chasing those ducks. All right, let's get this in the water. Get the root system cleaned up. You see how long they've grown. I'll have to trim all that off. All right, back to the bench now. All right, it's time now to come in and prune the roots. So I'm going to take off all those long ones. So I'll just trim those off. Like that. And we'll just take those away. So now I am left with a really nice root system. I really like this root system. Once in a while you get a really nice root system on a tree. So I'm going to just remove the, all the roots pointing straight down. So I'll start with that. Looks like, you know, if there was a tap root in the past, it's being removed. This will be the start of our radial root system. It looks like there was a weed in here. I'm just going to pull that out. Yeah, it's the weed. And I'm just going to comb the roots out now. Let's see what we've got here. Now, I don't know. There's another tree in here, and I think it's a separate tree that's grown either from a seed or a sucker. I'm not sure. I think. See, it looks like it has a root that goes down. I think it's a sucker that's grown up. There's a root here that came out, hit the edge of the pot, and then started wrapping around, so I'll trim that off shorter. Another one here. Just getting rid of all these spiral roots that are going round and round the pot. There's another one here that started to curl around the pot. Some more here. I'm just kind of doing a profile prune to the root system. Getting rid of all those roots going strange directions. The rest are pretty well radial roots now. Looking quite, quite nice. I think that's quite good. I think we've got a good 
radial root system started there. You can already see buttressing at the start of the trunk. It's a bit of a leaning trunk, but uh, you know, there's not much I can do about that. And as it grows, it'll straighten up and you know, grow straight up, which is what I want. Most of these redwoods in nature grow straight up, especially if they're in a forest. We'll have a quick look at uh, some of the pictures I have of redwood trees. It's too early to style this tree, but it'll maybe inspire you to grow your own redwood and, you know, the California or coastal redwoods are some of the most magnificent trees in the world. So let's have a quick look at some of those pictures now, and then we'll come back and plant the tree. Here's an illustration from National Geographic on extreme trees. The coastal redwood has a height of 115.6 meters. Next is the mountain ash with a height of 99.6 meters. The largest tree diameter, you can see it in the background there, is the Montezuma bald cypress with a diameter of 10 meters. The largest in volume is the giant sequoia with 1,489 square meters. And the oldest trees are the Great Basin bristlecone pines at 4,800 years old. Here's an illustration by Robert Van Pelt, and it shows all the different shapes and forms that you see in these coastal redwood trees. Really beautiful drawing. The last of the giants. Redwoods reign only along the Pacific coast from Southern Oregon to Big Sur. The closely related giant sequoia, larger but not taller, lives only in California's Sierra Nevada. During lifetimes that can span millennia, redwoods develop individual architecture. Like these resilient giants right, drawn from precise field measurements made by the artists and other scientists. Redwoods nearest the coast, more exposed to storms, develop the most complex crowns. Damage from wind or fire stimulates new growth. Additional trunks ascend from the main trunk and limbs, growing large enough to give rise to more reiterated trunks. So this is sort of that cathedral style that I've mentioned before. The tallest of the tall, rare survivors of logging grow on land sheltered by ridges or in valleys. Humboldt Redwood State Park holds more than 130 of the 180 redwoods known to top 350 feet tall. The current champion at 371.1 feet was discovered in the Redwood National Park in 2006. More than 95% of the redwoods are in second or third growth forests. Most sprout not from seeds, but from stumps or roots, reaching 150 feet in less than 100 years. The rich biodiversity and character of old growth forests takes centuries to form. I was going to repot the coastal redwood in the original plastic nursery pot, but I thought because it has such a nice root system, I'm going to give it this nice plastic Japanese pot. And then it, you know, it can grow for a couple of years and develop that root system really nicely without hitting the edges of the pot too quickly. So this is the pot I'll be putting it in today. The drainage holes in the bottom of this pot aren't really big, but I still need some screens. Otherwise all my soil will fall out the bottom, especially these big round holes in the corners. But the pot's really well drained. So I can water this coastal redwood a lot. The water will flow through getting oxygen in the soil and I can keep the roots nice and moist. So it should grow really well in this pot. All right. I think because there's so many holes in this pot, I'm just going to put one big, large drainage screen in the bottom. Just like that. That's perfect. 
So now I can add my soil and I'll fill it up to uh, probably three quarters full. All right, here goes the soil. The soil I'm using is a combination of used soil, new soil. So it's got a bit of lava rock, composted pine bark, turfus, and perlite in it. And probably, you know, a good quarter of each. Should be a good mixture for this redwood. I'm using my brass pot as a soil scoop and it's starting to get a really nice patina on it, especially inside if you can see that kind of greenish color. Yeah, it's still a little shiny on the outside, but that's going to weather, I think, this year, turn a nice green color. I really love some of the patina of the, you know, the metals and that. Even on my truck. <laughs> so I'll put a pile now off to the one side slightly and that's where the tree will sit on top. So let me get the tree out now and I'll put that slope towards the side kind of like that and then I've got to comb the roots out making sure they're kind of organized in the pot so they're Nice and radial, like that. That's pretty good. And now I can start filling it in with soil. So I want to lift the tree up just slightly as I'm working the soil in. That way the roots, instead of being flat, or dished upwards, they gently slope downwards. So I just want to hold the tree a little higher and work the soil into the root system. And that'll give me a really nice root base for the future. And now I can add even more soil. Again, I'm filling the pot so the soil level is just below the lip of the pot. That makes it easier to water so you're you know, when the surface of your soil is dry, the water doesn't run off over the edges of the pot. So I need a little bit more. It's a little low my soil level. That looks just about perfect. Tree's nice and firm in the pot. I will put some stones around it, but I think the next step is to water the tree. All right, it's time to water the the redwood. Here we go. The coastal redwood or California redwood. One of the tallest trees in the world. Yeah, I sure hope it grows for me. Okay, I think that is good. Baby's over at the watering station now. Hello, baby. Getting a drink. Hi. <laughs> Getting a drink there. Making a bit of a mess, I think. <laughs> hey, baby. Wow, look at you. Look at you. I've got my coastal redwood underway as a bonsai. I'll give you updates in spring, hopefully when it comes out into leaf. And now it's time to plant my seeds, my tamarind seeds and my oak seeds. Let's go in now and have a look at the seeds. We'll start with the tamarinds. It's actually been 48 hours since I've soaked them. And you can see the water's a little cloudy and there was some bubbling on top, so maybe they were fermenting a bit. The oak trees, these are the English oaks or the uh, royal oaks. They've all sunk to the bottom, except for one. There's one up top here, just a little one that's still floating. And then my red or black oaks or white oaks, I'm not sure what they are. Most of those have sunk to the bottom. You can see there's a bit of air in one. It's kind of a little more flotatious. 
<laughs> compared to the others. And up top, there's still three that are floating on the top. So, yeah, let's get them planted. I'm going to plant them in these seed trays, which have all the holes in it. I won't put screening in here. I'll just put the soil straight in the seed tray and I'll double it up so nothing will, the soil won't go out the bottom. And I'll plant, I think, I'm going to plant two flats, one with just tamarind seeds, and that one I'll keep indoors or in the greenhouse so it stays nice and warm. And the other two, I'll have to put them on the floor of the greenhouse where it's cooler. If I leave them outside, the squirrels will get into these seeds, these nuts, so I've got to keep them safely tucked away somewhere. Okay, so let's get to it. I'll start by filling the seed tray about halfway up. And I'm using the same bonsai soil that I planted the redwood in. I'm finding that this is using a lot of my soil up and I don't have a lot of soil mixed up at the moment. So I may have to plant them in a very shallow mixture, which should be all right. It's time now to plant the tamarind seeds. This will be try number three for me. I grew a tamarind from seed initially and it died over the winter uh, in the plant room. It just, I think it didn't get enough light. And then I had a, another tamarind that Noah gave me uh, that did really well in the summer. And then I gave it too much water and I think I, I rotted the roots and it uh, died on me in fall. So yeah, this will be try number three. So I'm just gonna tip the water out of the seed container. Like that. These tamarind seeds, they sound like teeth. They're kind of, they kind of have that feeling of teeth on them. I'm looking at the tamarind seeds and they still look like they haven't plumped up. They still look hard and dry. They sunk to the bottom, so they must have, you know, water in them. But I'm wondering if I should scratch the seed coating to kind of roughen it up and then soak it again. They just don't seem plump to me. I, I have a feeling they won't germinate if I do that, if I don't scratch the seed coating. I'll tip all the tamarind seeds out on the table here. Like that. And then I'll just run them across the file, scratching up that waterproof seed coating. And I'll put them back in the bottle for soaking. So I'll have to do this to each seed. This may take a while, but I think it'll be worth it. I think I'll get better results. Last time I did the same thing. I soaked the tamarind seeds for 24 hours and planted them. And out of probably 150 I planted, I got one that grew. So if this scratching works, I'll know that's the secret to success because they sure feel like they're waterproof. And often seeds, they've kind of evolved to, you know, be digested by an animal, and then it goes through the digestive system. So the acids of the digestive system eat away at the seed coating, and that's how they get rid of it for germination. It comes out in their waste and has a nice pile of compost to grow in. So this would be like, probably monkeys would eat these tamarind seeds. So my brother and I went mountain biking the other day. We did uh, a 12 kilometer loop, really tough riding, beautiful scenery. Um, it took us two and a half hours of hard riding, up hills, down hills. Some of the hills were so steep that, well, there's one I had to get off the bike and push it up. It, I just. It was so steep you couldn't get traction. The rear wheels just spun. Even, you know, you had to lean so far forward to keep your balance and it was just one of those hills you couldn't ride up. But most of it was just beautiful, like a roller coaster, cross marshes, it was just beautiful. Good workout, really good. I was just, 
so tired at the end of it, I could hardly pedal. But some of the scenery was just so spectacular that I'll have to go out there with the uh, video camera and just show you the trails and because it's just amazing. And the day was beautiful. It was a nice cool breeze. No insects out. Just ah, picture perfect mountain bike weather and trails. I've been working away at the tamarind seeds. This is how many I've done and I've got a lot to go. So I think at this rate it's going to get dark before I finish. So I'll go on to planting the oak seeds. All right, so I'll get my English oaks. I'll pour the water out. Making sure not to pour the acorns out. Okay, and I plant them pointy end down. So this is where the cap goes on top of them. You can see there's kind of a flat spot and there's a point on the bottom. So I plant them point end down. So I'll do that. I'll put all the Royal Oaks on one side of the seed tray. There is a root coming out the bottom of this one. Some viewer noticed that, see that? So the root comes out that pointy end and there's where the cap goes on top. So I'll be very careful planting that not to wreck the root like that. There's another root coming out that one. Very exciting. This one, I think, has a root starting, too. Oh, that's good. That shows these are good, viable seeds. So that's it for the royal oaks. And now I'll plant my the other kind of oaks. I'll just tip the water off of those. I'm not reusing this water because usually when you soak seeds, it has especially in acorns, it has that, um, what do you call it, tannic acid in it. And that's why the water is that kind of that, uh, sort of a golden color. If you eat acorns, you need to wash them several times and boil them in water to get that acid out of them before they're good enough to eat. And then you can make all kinds of things out of them. Flour, you just eat them by themselves however you want. Okay, so same theory on these. The cap is on the top. You can see the little circle and the point is on the bottom. So we'll again plant those vertically. And that gives you a nice straight root going up to the trunk. Otherwise you get a, if you plant them sideways, the root comes out one side, the green growth comes up the top and you get this kind of S-shaped kink in your tree, which you don't want. It's really really hard to get rid of. You just kind of have to let the tree grow out of it. So this is the one that had the damaged top. I'll, I'll plant it also. I don't know if that one will grow or not, but I think we have room for it. So indeed I do. Okay, now I've got to top dress that with soil. All right, here I go with the soil. I'll just Sprinkle it lightly around the acorns. It looks like a scene from Alien. The alien eggs growing. And I'll just keep adding soil until they're just below the soil surface. You don't have to plant them too deeply because as long as the as long as that pointed tip is in the ground, they'll grow. And that is the last of my soil. So that will be the height. <laughs> I don't have much choice in that. That's just, all the acorns are safely in the soil. That's good. So now I'll give it a good watering. All right, here I go with the water. I'll put the oak seedlings on the floor of the greenhouse tonight. That way it'll stop them freezing with the overnight temperatures. Today started out really cold and cloudy, but by the afternoon the sun came out and my trees in the greenhouse enjoyed a beautiful, warm afternoon of sunshine. 
So, right now the temperature is 28.8 degrees Celsius with 21% humidity. So, I'm really glad I left them out. Uh, this new heater is going to keep it warm tonight. And yeah, I'm going to try and extend this growing season by a month. And I think it'll work because I can see all kinds of new growth starting. Really exciting. There's my tray of oak seeds, my acorns, down on the floor there. They'll stay fairly cool down there, but not, uh, they shouldn't freeze at all. I'll continue to work away on my tamarind seeds. I've got a lot to go, but I'll get there. I'll just uh, spend the rest of the afternoon doing that. I'll soak them again for 24 hours and then plant them. And I'll either put them in the greenhouse or inside the plant room. So I got to keep those warm there, tropical. And then I think these are palms. They were from dates. They used to be long and skinny and cylindrical. And I soaked them and they swelled up and now they're kind of round. So I think that's what they are. So I'll be planting those too. If the tamarind seeds germinate and start growing, I'll show you that in an update in a future video. But that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.